Hi there, welcome back. I know I mentioned that the next video would probably be in the new year, but um, when you're an addict, you're an addict, and uh, I couldn't stay away from this stuff. This is a rather unusual or special video because it deals with a piece of equipment that uh, a friend of mine needs for his recording studio. If you know anybody who owns or operates a recording studio, you'll know that uh, they have a fetish for microphones, and my friend is no exception. Uh, he's got uh, probably the best recording studio on the island of Madeira. It's called Studio 21. I'll put a link down below if you want to look at what they're doing. Some amazing stuff. It's a music school, recording studio, and um, they also sell a hell of a lot of great equipment. No sponsorship here. He's just a very good friend of mine. We've been friends for years, and I get a lot of very interesting stuff from him to to mess around with. So we both support each other's fetishes. Anyway, let's have a look at this. What this is, is a vintage microphone. Now this is the MD-21 from Sennheiser. If uh, you know anything about microphones, you'll know that this thing or microphones like these have uh, made a pretty amazing comeback because they are starting to get sought after especially by people who uh, do home recordings or professional recordings to get that special effect that no other microphone can give you. Everyone is special and you only need one more than you've already got. But this is a beauty. This thing is in very, very good condition and it comes in three boxes. If I can get it out. This is the main microphone. Put that one box aside for now. And of course, it wouldn't be useful without its vintage stand. Now, strangely enough, this one is from Grundig. Now, I know that this thing fits exactly in here, but I don't know whether there was a Sennheiser stand or not. I don't know enough about these vintage microphones to be quite honest with you, but um, obviously this thing's from Grundig, and what you do, there's a sprung clip on here, and you fit it in like that, and then you tighten it. And you've got pretty neat looking microphones sitting on here. Now the problem is, this thing uses a pretty unusual output socket. I don't know if you can actually see there. It's sort of, it's not an XLR, it's not a DIN, it's a Tushin, I think it's called. Um, mini Tushin, I don't know, I'll, I've got that wrong, I'm sure. I'll put that up on the screen. And what it does is it basically provides a source of a balanced output from the microphone. And to get that into your recording system, they provided some cables. Now here's where things get a little bit strange. I assumed these cables were identical and that, because if you look at this, this is the same one. So this fits in the back here. Uh, I've got to get this right. Fits in the back here. And you've basically got your output over here. Now, I don't know why this is just a male. It'll be a female to male, male to female adapter. But the other one is where it gets really interesting. Because you've got the same system here. This one actually screws in. A little bit like the... Uh, microphone cables that you, the modern ones that actually screw in. And then what you've got on the other side is a DIN output. Now here's where things got a bit interesting. I started measuring just to check that the cables were fine and I couldn't get a one-to-one -one correlation. You know, with the, with the uh, ohmmeter, I couldn't get that thing correlating to this. So I decided to go ahead and open it. And it is pretty interesting. Because when you open it, you find something rather unusual in here. This is, looks like a normal DIN plug. And 
and so I can just pull it out, push it out. This is where it pays to be careful with these things and you'll see why in a second. So I'll pull that out. Nothing unusual here, but what is unusual is that this thing has got a little transformer in there. That thing there is a little transformer and it's minute and it fits in here. Now, my surprise might sound pretty stupid to some of you who know exactly what these things are like, but what this is is an impedance conversion transformer. And right, really what it does is it takes the low output impedance from this thing, fairly low output impedance, and I believe this is the one that converts it to a high output impedance. So this cable is not just an adapter cable, it's actually an impedance converter. Now I believe there were some uh, other models of this microphone or similar microphones where you actually had a switch and you selected for high or low output impedance. This one doesn't have it. This thing's got nothing on there. Just the output. And so the conversion for high output impedance is done on the cable, which is pretty neat. And neater still is the way this thing fits in here. It's, it's really, really a tight fit. Which is why I have to be careful when I fiddle with this so that I don't break any of those connection-wise because they are incredibly fine. Now, my buddy wants this to be just to the standard low output impedance, which means that he has no use for this cable, which means we just put it back and leave it there. Boom. Okay. So this cable is not going to be used. Now, to connect an XLR to this, I don't want to open that up and change that to a, a male XLR socket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this one because this one is literally one to one. It's just an extension cable. And I've noticed that it's quite easy to remove the one side. And of course, the idea is you don't do any damage to this because these things are pretty rare and you really don't want to go messing around and making this thing, you know, messing up these sockets that you probably can't get anymore. I'm sure you can somewhere, old stock, but I don't think you can get them new anymore. And here we've got three connectors, normal three connectors. So one will be ground. And that'll be that one there. And that one there seems to come to the middle pin here. And then you've got the hot signal and the cold signal. And quite honestly, I'm not sure which is which. And quite honestly, I don't think it makes any difference. Obviously, what happens is if you've got two of these side by side and they are reversed, you will get phase inversion. One will actually cancel the other one out if you don't get that uh, the phasing right. But um, for the purposes here, I'm going to consider yellow as cold and green as hot. And if he gets a few more, as long as I stick to that convention, we're good. And this he's going to use, I believe, I think it's for guitar. I think it's record guitar. I'm not sure. I've looked on the web. I've done quite a bit of research. I did find a site that uh, shows you how to convert, how to... Uh, connect this to an XLR because, as you probably know, in an XLR, ground is pin 1. So basically, we want to make, we want to do this. We want to connect this one here. And because I don't have too many of these sockets lying around, I've got a just a small adapter here. I'm going to remove this one and put this at the end of that. And pin 1 here is the ground. So we need to connect pin two of that one to pin one and then connect the hot to the hot and cold to cold. And hopefully this should work. I have no idea if the microphone works, by the way. <laughs> I'm assuming it does. If it doesn't, this will be a rather stupid video. But um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just desolder this one and I'm going to 
connect this to the end of this cable. As he wants low impedance, he'll get exactly the impedance that the microphone itself is producing without any conversion. This will go into his mixer and um, he can do whatever he wants there. And of course, the reason I'm putting this at the end of that is really just as an adapter. If I could make it smaller, it'd probably be better, but I don't want to cut this cable. I mean, ultimately, I could probably just put it on here, but I don't want to cut this cable. This is original. So I'm going to use the full length of this cable, which is about, uh, uh, what, foot and a half, 50 centimeters, something like that. And we can then just add it to this part here. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, that should do it. Now, do we believe it works or do we test it first? Well, there's always something you should do and then what you do do, I'm going to just connect it up and trust that it works. That's why I get to dismantle so many things when I presume These connectors are actually pretty good. I believe they're the Nutrix ones. And here we have it. A Teuschen, whatever it is, connector on the one side. And bloody hell, I've got the wrong one. <laughs> Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. What did I say I wanted? I wanted the nail on this end. Okay. Remember what I said about um, how I have to disconnect a lot of stuff? This is why. The idea with the XLR, or the convention, if there is one, is that you always use the male connectors it pointing towards or the pins pointing towards where the signal's going. So in this case, our signal's coming out of the microphone. It'll be coming out of the microphone. It'll come in here and it goes into the next stage. So the plugs, the male is pointing. So that should be the one I want so that I can connect a normal microphone cable and, um, and then use this to connect it to the mixing desk. So let's just redo this whole bloody thing. That'll teach me. Okay, so I've got a little, this little Pro-L mixer here, just to do the testing. I've, uh, I'm going to connect this to the output. That's connected to the amp. It's just a guitar amp. Should do okay. Let's put the main mix to minimum. And now we've got to connect this guy up. And the way to do that is we connect this little guy to the back. Now we won't use an extension cable, we'll just use direct in to the XLR input of the mixer, that's input 1, switch it on, give it some volume, hey, we're getting some feedback which means it's good. Let's try and talk into this. I don't know if you can hear that, but it actually sounds perfect. Coming from me, that doesn't mean much because with recording specialists, perfect is subjective. But the point is, our microphone is working. And if I connect, if I can connect this straight to the output of the microphone, we might be able to find out how it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the recording microphone, the phone I'm using to speak into, right at the speaker of the amp that I'm using. And uh, hopefully you'll get an idea of what it sounds like. Obviously it's going through the mixer, it's going into the microphone I'm using, it's being recorded on the camera. 
but um, I'll give you an idea. Now, the point is, we've got ourselves a very, very nice condition, vintage microphone, which I'm sure will make uh, the recordings that uh, my friend's recording studio is going to make absolutely, absolutely unique, fantastic, as usual. And um, it's always a pleasure to work on these old things because they do um, still give the recordings a characteristic that otherwise modern microphones just don't get to. So here we are. What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> uh, these things are used in the recording studio to get particular effects. I don't know whether anybody would ever use this uh, as a voice microphone. Uh, probably needs a bit of work. But uh, for the recording studio to mic certain instruments, I'm sure that it makes all the difference. And I'll probably be seeing the results of this soon in my friend's studio. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for your support this past year. 2019 has been quite amazing for this channel. Uh, this is something which just started as a bit of a recording log for my benefit. And um, it's grown to nearly 6,000 subscribers, which quite frankly amazes the hell out of me. Never expected that, but I am thankful for it. So thank you once again. Thank you also for those who are supporting me on Patreon. And um, this time, when I say goodbye for, for now, it'll be until next year. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll be back soon. Bye for now.